welcome back to a very special Thursday edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Christopher Brown. Today is our monthly entertainment rundown with our new associate producer, entertainment correspondent, Mr. Michael Nichols Pate. Michael, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it, as always. How have you been since our Oscar edition? Not that we don't talk on a regular basis, but how have you been for my, my our great listeners out there in our Twitterverse, in our social media verse? Um, well, <laughs> as someone who won the Oscars, as we all, all remember, what was that bet? Whoever wins knows movies better than the other. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm doing fairly well, actually. I am about to go up on the musical I am uh, been doing for the past five months. Susical the uh, musical, for those who don't remember. Musical the musical. And then I just auditioned and I'm going to be a part of the Bunbury Players, which we have talked about that on the show before. Um, I'm doing a, a cabaret at the end of May, and then I will be taking a long break from performing because uh, she's tired, <laughs> Daddy real needs tired. Some sleep time. Uh, yeah, I need some sleep. Uh, I need a break, uh, a Xanax, something. Um, <laughs> and uh, as when this drops, I will actually be on vacation in New York City. New York, New York, get the wings some time. Broadway. Broadway. Which Broadways are you going to see, if you well, don't mind me asking? Sure. As of right now, I have tickets to Funny Girl, which has Beanie Feldstein, Remy, Karam Lou, and Jane Lynch in it. Um, and it's the first revival since Barbara. So the reviews aren't looking promising, but I'm hoping for the best. Um, we have tickets to see POTUS, which stars Julianne Hough and Vanessa Williams and Rachel Dratch. Super excited about that. Uh, and we have tickets to see Paradise Square, a new musical. Uh, that's also not getting terrible or not getting great reviews. It's getting pretty awful reviews. It's probably going to flop. Um, uh, I think the over under on it flopping are pretty high right now. Uh, and then we still have three more shows to fill in. We're thinking we might try and go see Minutes with Noah Reed from Schitt's Creek. And we might go see Six. We might go see Beetlejuice, the musical. There's a whole long list of things we want to see that we need three more slots to fill. Three more slots. Hey, that's all that matters. As long as you've got a productive time in New York, that's all that really matters. Absolutely. Plus, you can come back. You can, like, probably, like, in Candy, you could probably, like, ta write that off as a tax credit now because you're an entertainment correspondent. So you can just <gasps> write it off. Right uh, I don't know how I don't know how taxes work and I don't want to go to jail like the situation from Jersey Shore but I mean if I can get a write-off for it I'm down right enough right enough as Jerry Springer would say what's a write-off I don't know but they just write it off so that sounds fun it sounds like you're really excited to get so back ready. is this the first time you've been back to Broadway since uh, you've moved back to well, New York it's the second time I'm going to the city since moving back to New York. Um, I have not been able to get to the city more than once last month, March. And then, um, but this is the first time seeing actual Broadway performances since I have been returned and rebirthed to New York State. Now well, that's good. I'm yes. excited for you. You are really enjoying that button-down collar shirt, aren't you, right now? I'm living my dream right now. What you can are, I say? You are, you are living the dreams of dreams but speaking of dreams of dreams i think we should start with the biggest dreams in all entertainment nights and that is oscars 2022 it seems like forever ago but we have not talked on the record about this since so as you mentioned earlier on you did win uh i think i don't have the numbers up in front of me right now but uh your track record of not getting the best picture Continue. still holds. <laughs> Continues. <laughs> uh, you went with Belfast, I went with Coda, and I think for the major top six prizes, everything else fell into place for you and I. Um, any big surprises for you? Mm, I think I'm a little surprised at how much Dune did sweep. I thought they were going to diversify a little more. I knew Dune was going to get a ton, but I didn't think it was going to be that many. 
Um, I think now we need to be on the lookout for the next Dune movie. It will either go the way of Matrix and never pick up another Oscar again, or it's going to go the way of the Lord of the Rings, and it's just going to probably pick everything up between now and the end of time. Well, I, I do remember because as Dune is uh, written and directed, I think written, was it written by? And directed by Dennis, which how he didn't get nominated, I'm sure. Well, and I think that's what a lot of people were a little bit more concerned about because I don't remember Lord of the Rings, the uh, Fellowship of the Rings, if Peter Jackson was actually nominated that first round. Nope. So, but he was nominated the third round and he did win for that best director and best picture. So it could go the way of Lord of the Rings. Uh, I don't know if they're doing three movies or if they're just going to do the two and then potentially do the Child of Dune, but we will see because... It seems like it's a big franchise now, but let's see how well they can do number two, because we all know that the second one's usually the worst, unless it's Spider-Man 2. Yeah, Which Spider-Man 2? <laughs> <laughs> the original Tobey Maguire Spider-Man 2. Um, Spider-Man 3 with Tobey Maguire, the first time, was and is the pinnacle of superhero cinema. Nothing will ever be better than... Tobey Maguire going now dig on this while he is dark Spider-Man in the club, period. With, isn't that Jessica Chastain? Isn't that Jessica Chastain as Gwen Stacy? No. Are we sure? Yeah. Who was Gwen Stacy in that? Uh, Elizabeth Banks. No. No. It was Bryce Dallas Howard. They look very similar and they both were in the help. So it's easy that I got them confused. Wow. wow. They were. They look alike. Wow. Yes, they are two white women that look very similar. It's the, it's the eyes. They both have that similar shaped eye. Heard that. But overall, um, I think that was the biggest shock for me. We'll talk a little bit more about the Oscars here in a few seconds. But for the award ceremony itself, it wasn't that everything it was kind of predictable on some of the guesses like you predicted the, will smith slapping chris rock across the mouth i didn't want to mention that i wanted to go past that but since listen you are we now have the, to mention it now you are the associate producer of the show i guess i have to let you uh, so for those who are wondering i should actually mention that so as my uh gift for him winning uh, for michael 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 Nichols Pate winning the Oscar uh, bet between us. He is officially being bumped up from entertainment, entertainment correspondent to associate producer of the cross border interviews with Chris Brown. So he is, uh, he is part of the show now. So as much as you've gotten to know him over the last year and a bit, two years, almost, oh my God, almost two years, almost two years. It's been a journey. Hasn't it girl? Um, he is going to be on the credits now as well. So he will be in the credits starting May 1st, the first episode in May. You will see his little name up in lights. So I'm not sure if he can uh, write this off as a tax write-off, but he is now Probably able. Not, he's but I'm going to try. He is <laughs> going to try. He is going to try. So with that, uh, let's let's talk about the slap heard around the world as much as I do not want to hear about that anymore. Um, Listen, we be quick. Yeah, let's do it as quickly as possible. So, anyone can remember G.I. Jane came out in 1997. Chris Rock went to 2022, then made a joke about G.I. Jane to Will Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, who is going who has alopecia, who then therefore was bald. And Chris Rock then made a joke about G.I. Jane and her his wife, uh, Will Smith, Jada Pinkett Smith, being bald, so on and so forth, being how she's excited for G.I. Jane, G.I. Jane 2. And then Will Smith walked up on stage after making fun of a few other people and then walked up on stage and slapped Chris Rock right across the mouth. Chris Rock responded by saying, ah, it's a joke about G.I. Jane. And then Will Smith said, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. And then said, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Mouth. And then Chris Rock said, it's a joke. Okay, let's move on. And we don't really remember who actually won the award that Chris Rock, Rock was there presenting. I think it was Quest Love for Best Documentary, but at the end of the day, no one really remembers. Everyone remembers the slap. So he also because he also because he also made the joke. It's a movie wrong, it's a movie with Quest Love and a bunch of white guys. And there was a bunch of other people of color on that producer credit that won the Oscar that afterwards came on and said, 
yeah, Chris, Chris Rock got slapped, but he totally was like, fuck everyone else on this except for Questlove and the white guys. So like, after that, then, uh, then there was an altercation afterwards of was Will Smith actually asked to leave the Oscars or was he not asked to leave? The producers of the Oscars did say that he was asked to leave. Will Smith says that he was not going to. He then released a statement 24 hours after the Oscars, which then therefore made the Oscars then have to say, okay, we're going to do something. Then Whoopi Goldberg got, basically got into the whole shit show, which really went, why is Whoopi Goldberg even mentioning something like this? But then it's Whoopi Goldberg, so we let her do anything on The View that she wants to, unless mm, it's about anti-Semitism no. and then she gets kicked off. And then afterwards uh the oscars then came out and said okay we're gonna have a discipline, disciplinary meeting about uh will smith will smith came out and said we love everyone everything's great uh and then the oscars then came down with a 10-year ban on will smith which will smith said i understand and i completely agree with that have fun and i'll see you in 10 years so that is the wrap of, of the slap heard around the world did i miss anything yeah chris rock's mama and chris rock finally gave formal statements oh i didn't see that that was literally today. Oh. <laughs> and Chris Rock was like, I've recovered both bruises and my ego. And then Chris Rock's mama was like, fuck that Will Smith. He fucking like a plague on him, a plague on his house, a plague on his family. Like Chris Rock's mama was more pressed than Chris Rock was. Oh, and then also on top of that, Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith did do the Red Talk table again, which is their online show. And they did talk about the openly slap and then how they're struggling with their marriage right now. So they're dealing with their marriage. So they're going to be a little bit less public as uh, uh, going forward due to the fact that they're going to be trying to heal from this experience that they had back a month ago while people are dying in the Ukraine. But anyway, we got to heal about a slap we heard around the world, even though that people are dying from cancer, you know, drugs. Oh, to quote the late great keeping up with the kardashians kim there's people dying exactly so for those who are, who have never actually seen the show watched it on youtube um michael and i are two very white people white people <laughs> So just in case you're listening to this and going, wow, that Chris Brown really does not sound like his uh, music in uh, the Chris oh, Brown God. universe. Girl, no, yikes. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm white Chris Brown. We are so white you can pronounce the H when you say it. Exactly. Like Stewie. Whipped cream. Um, so I'm going to ask the open-ended statement to the two white guys in the room. Who was in the wrong? Who was in the right? What, where do we go from for here? Was Will Smith in the wrong? Does the 10-year ban on him wrong, right? How do we go forward? Listen, I... I'm listening. I don't <laughs> think either of them are in the right. I'm also not going to just... I don't think Chris Rock's joke was appropriate. I don't think a lot of the jokes of the night, not even just Chris Rock, uh, were appropriate. I think Amy Schumer's jokes were far worse. <laughs> And the animation jokes were far worse than what Chris Rock said. Um, I do not think that Will Smith should have got up and slapped him. Um, I also think the 10 year ban is a bit ridiculous in terms of length. I think that like there's been other situations where people have not been banned. I mean, Roman Polanski sexually admitted to sexually assaulting a youth and won Woody the Allen. award. <laughs> Woody Allen, did I, oh, Woody Allen, or who did I say, Roman Polanski? Both of them. Yeah, both of them, and have one. I'm like Kevin you, Spacey. I, yeah, Kevin Spacey. <laughs> like, also, um, Harvey Weinstein really, and now it's coming out that he's been banned permanently. But it's like he won awards while everyone knew this was going on, and yeah, it's alleged. But like, it was the worst kept secret in Hollywood. Um, uh, they allowed John Wayne after he tried to go on stage and and fight a Native American woman, asking to be picked to uh, depicted more appropriately in movies. Uh, six people had to hold him down while he tried to go fight her on stage live on television and he didn't have any repercussions. I mean, I just feel like it's very coded that's going on and I don't love that. Snap. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this and I'm going to kind of take a different angle and that's why you are the associate producer because you will try to cancel me after this or my listeners will. You go to an event like this, you are hoity-toity. I'm going to take the Ricky Gervais type of approach here. If you go to these events, people are watching. People are not wanting to watch a three and a half hour show where everyone's getting up and self-congratulating everyone who's ever helped them out. 
I want to see some attacks. I want to see people getting digged at. And I want to see these people get knocked down a peg or two. Understandable, there's things that are off topic. But at the same time, if Ricky Gervais can make a joke at the Golden Globes right to Mel Gibson's face, Mel Gibson, Mel Gibson, and not get punched, then I think there's a moment when we have to go, okay, what's a joke and what's not a joke? So that's my only opinion on this. I think that if I'm going to an event where I know there's a comedian on stage, I am potentially opening myself up to be ridiculed about what I look like, how I act, how I dress, whatever. And I'm okay with that because I'm buying a ticket to go there. And now Michael, for those who are not paying attention or are not watching this right now, has wanted to jump in and basically slap me like Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars and tell me his point of view. So go ahead, Michael. Um, I think that, and will, and a lot of people have said this too, this has been kind of some discourse that's come out. When you are nominated or you are there like as like an invited guest as like a, hey, I'm Will Smith, I'm nominated. Like, yes, you have to expect there's going to be jokes made about you. Jada went there as a guest. She was not up for any nomination. She was just there as a plus one. And it could have just as easily been anyone else. I think the joke, we kind of, and like, that's the thing. They made tons of jokes on the press circuit about the entanglement and about Will Smith and the face and the crying and the, 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 the. like nobody was joking about her, even her at like Golden Globes. Like, and I think that when you look at like who's nominated, like if she was nominated and like that joke was made, I think it may have gone over differently. But also, I just, I don't know. I just think that like, we just need to be a little more pointed about, or not pointed, a little more, um, I don't even know the word, it's just escaping my brain, or uh, a little more uh, aware. There we go. A little more aware of what we're joking about and who we're joking about, because some people just can't take the joke and some can. And I'm not, again, not saying Will Smith should have slapped him. I'm just saying we have to kind of acknowledge that perhaps Jada's not a person to joke about because she was very upset and you could see it all over her face when she rolled her eyes and we made the joke that she's going to go yell at Chris Rock later. Will Smith took that as I need to go slap Chris Rock and then Jada thought it was hilarious. Okay, I did not want to spend the first 25 minutes we can't, of the show we can't. literally talking about this because we could talk about this for three hours. Yes. And we we try to promise our listeners that we're going to only do this for an hour and that never happens. And I'm this committed. is why. This I'm is why. Commit. <laughs> we're committing to an hour tonight. Bullshit. <laughs> I'm just putting that out there right now. But before we continue on, we do have to take a quick commercial break because we have to get paid by our advertisers. So we'll be right back after this brief commercial break, which is going to seem like 30 seconds to you, but it's going to be like two minutes for us because I need to go pee. Don't know why I said that, but here we are. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> Come celebrate Calgary's favorite cocktail. Calgary Caesar Fest is taking place on May 19th and 20th right here in the birthplace of Canada's official national cocktail. As listeners and viewers of the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown, you will receive 20% off your tickets when you use the promo code CBI Caesars. That's C-B-I Caesars, all one word. Just visit CalgaryCaesarFest.com and get your tickets today. Holy crap, did you see that commercial? I would totally, totally head over and get your free, not free. I'm going to start that introduction again because it's not free. And if I say free, then it's going to cost me. <laughs> I shouldn't say me. It's going to cost us money. <laughs> I don't like that. More money for me. Exactly. Welcome back. Uh, if you did not listen to the last 30 seconds, I would highly recommend over, going over to the crossborderinterviews.ca website, finding the YY Caesar Fest link, hitting it, go to the event bright page, buy your tickets, use the promo code, get 20% off your tickets for May's upcoming Caesar Fest. 
it will be a great time. We'll be live streaming from there. So be sure to check it out. Well, I shouldn't say we because Michael is in New York. I'm in Calgary. I will be live streaming from there. Michael, 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 uh, we want to talk about theater for a few minutes here, but we want to go across the pond as the to, old, oh, UK to the UK to, to the old UK and talk about the Olivier Awards. Uh, UK, I hon? Know, what? UK, hon? UK, hon? Ah, RuPaul reference for those who didn't watch the RuPaul reference. Ah. Um. So I did not watch the Olivier Awards. I caught some of it from what you randomly texted me eagerly telling me to watch these things. And then what you just were like, I hate this. Yep, you, you go ahead. You go ahead. I'm going to sit back and drink my, my, my random protein shake for radiation after radiation treatments. Go ahead. Love it. So, so the Olivier Awards are the British Tonys, essentially. And they are for British theater, specifically like West End and the performance that are going on there. Uh, a couple of the really big winners of the night for a play were Life of Pi, which features a ton of really cool puppets, specifically the tiger. I don't know if anyone has seen the movie that came out, God, six, seven, eight years ago, maybe. The movie book based on the book, based on the movie, based on the book. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a good journey. Um, but the play is based on down the line, pick one, it's based on it. Um, <laughs> it's got really cool puppets. I don't, did I send you that one or no? Uh, no, but I did see it because you know, cool. I, went, I went on a journey when you send me things, I get sucked into about three right. hours of my life, completely God going, where, where, where's the time gone? <laughs> and then um, musical, it was the revival of uh, Cabaret that was the big winner with Eddie Redmayne picking up the award. And then the performance that they did for it is the girl who's taking over for, um, God, she was, Jesse Buckley. She was in Lost Daughter. She was nominated for Best Supporting Actress this year. Um, Jesse Buckley take, was the girl? She was Sally Bowles until this new girl, new took, girl over. took over and the new girl performed Life is a Cabaret, which is how I want this show always done. Like very coked out, very not good like she just had an abortion the love of her life is a gay man just left her and this is her one shot to like prove she's something and it's like minutes after her breakup and her abortion and like she goes on and sings this song in the club and it's supposed to like be gritty and dark and coked out and like the it, brilliant like it was brilliant it's not like the best most gorgeous singing you've ever heard because it's not supposed to be it's supposed to be like she's in a two bit shitty club in Berlin um, and she has fallen from grace. And so for those who don't know about the Olivier Awards, so this is the point in time where I'm going to turn the tables a little bit. I start asking you questions because I want to learn just like my list or our listeners want to learn as well. The Olivier Awards, are they a preamble to what we can expect to see on Broadway in a few years? Uh, yes, no, maybe so. This is the big thing with the Olivier Awards. Like sometimes the London, the stuff in London translates to Broadway and it goes to Broadway. Sometimes it dies there. Um, the right the other reason I say that is because I everyone remembers Kinky Boots, the movie Kinky sure. Boots, then turned into a Cindy Lauper play, a Broadway show. I think that started in london didn't it or did it start in broadway and then and that's the only ref literally that's my entire broadway like knowledge the right King there King. exactly um and laverne cox was in it <laughs> yeah i'm gonna be honest i don't 100 percent know where kinky boots started sometimes they start in the u.s and then translate to the uk sometimes vice versa sometimes stuff in the uk does super well and they say we want to bring it to the u.s and we're going to recast things. And it doesn't like the color purple um, with Cynthia Arriva was originated in the revival of it was originated in uh, UK and then translated to the US. And that's when they plugged in Jennifer Hudson and they plugged in Danielle Brooks into it. Um, and it was brilliant. And then there was Dream Girls, which everyone was casting for and auditioning for in 2019 and early 2020 that with the pandemic has gone absolutely nowhere and like i'm still looking around where is my dream girls with amber riley as effie white like it was supposed to come and it hasn't so that's the thing 
this stuff could be amazing in the UK and not be brought at all to the US, just like it can be amazing in the US and never once step foot on the UK stage. There's a lot of Andrew Lloyd Webber's musicals that are that have gone up in the West End and have never gone up in the US. Love Never Dies is one of them, um, which is the Phantom of the Opera sequel. It's garbage. It's so bad. He should have he she should have stopped. Uh, Already had done that. There also is this Andrew Lloyd Webber Cinderella, which is currently at the West End. Um, yeah, he had to make his own Cinderella. It's Andrew Lloyd Webber. What do we expect? Um, Memories. Love it. There was there was a production of Cats that had Nicole Scherzinger as Grizabella the cat, and it was it was amazing in the UK. Wait, whoa, whoa, Never whoa, made it to whoa, the US. Whoa. You're meaning that Cats was around before Rebel Wilson, Judy Dench, uh, uh, like James Corden took a turn at it? Like, really? I am shook. Shook. Do you want to hear some of the most shocking news? What's that? For a while, Cats was one of the longest running Broadway shows of all time. And it's still, I believe, in the top 10. What's the top one? Do you know? Phantom. Is it really? Is it? Phantom's so been running since 1988. What's that? Why is that so popular? I don't know. I'm gonna be so honest. I've seen Phantom on Broadway. It's good. It needs a revamp. Like it's time to close Phantom and let something else go in there. But it's such a staple. Just like Wicked's never gonna close. I don't think Book of Mormon is ever gonna close. It's well, I can see Book of Mormon. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I like it. Well, I laughed. I, I it's good. Book it. of Mormon's great. I, I enjoy it. And they just revamped it so that they they had conversations and they said, we need to change some of these jokes because they are no longer really kind of culturally accepted. They did that over the pandemic. They met with the touring production and the Broadway production and prominent members of the Black community and said, we need to change some of these jokes because they're just, they're just offensive. And they did. And then it's yeah, Coming from I mean, Matt Trey Parker and Matt Stone, I know. the kings of I know. Park, like that is huge. Mm-hmm. What, what, what's going on here, Matt and Trey? Come on, tell us. Like, what ah. is South Park going to get canceled here? Like, you're going to pull it and start being more culturally assessed? Probably not. Well, it, um. actually, it does make sense because yeah. now there's a big running joke in this season of South Park. I know this, the great thing about our show we can jump around like this the big running uh, joke in uh, this season of south park is tolkien is one of their friends and he's african-american he's one of the african-americans on the show and the entire time for the first 24 seasons or however many seasons everyone thought it was token but it's not his name is tolkien as in J.R.R. tolkien but they are making it culturally acceptable now and saying, no, it's Tolkien, not Tolkien. <laughs> Listen, it's things change and jokes change and what's I just, I, I didn't expect them. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so we, I mean, that's the thing. I really hope Life of Pi comes to the US. I hope that this version of Cabaret, which the entire thing is shot like in like a, like a go down the steps and it's a nightclub underneath a, a like building that's like a tiny itty bitty little gritty room i need this production on broadway it's probably not going to come sadly eddie red Ed, eddie red main won for the mc i am sure did uh he did win for the mc and i think if it did come eddie red main would come um you think so yes maybe even jesse buckley oh. she wants a tony does she why they all want a tony tony's it's the T and E got. It's one of the top four awards. It's the highest award in theater you can get. Is it? Yeah. Because you, the United States has centralized itself so much with these award shows that we have placed the United States four major awards as the pinnacle of all awards you can win. Because hmm. technically the BAFTAs could be bigger than the Oscars and mean more than the Oscars, but we hold the Oscars to a higher level than the BAFTAs. I'm sorry. I will still think that a Genie Award is better than the Oscars or the Emmys any day of the week. Okay. Yeah, I went there. Okay. I I don't have any horse in the game. 
Yeah, you do. You are on a show that is Canadian, the most critically acclaimed podcast in Canada. No, I'm saying I'm not going to fight you on it. I don't have a horse in the game. I'm not going to ever win one of these awards. So we could win a genie. We're a Canadian show. Of course we could win. Okay. I want to okay. win a genie so I can be like, I'm a genie award winner. And then I can say, I'm a genie in a bottle. <laughs> More like I'm a genie in a Zoom square. Ah, oh my God, I, my bags and my eyes are huge today. I am exhausted, um, guys. Yeah. So, so it sounds like the Olivier Awards are, they're setting yeah. up for something that's coming. Tony's are, uh, not the Tony's, Broadway is back open. It seems like the pandemic is kind of over. I know you said at the beginning of the show that you're, go, you're heading down there. Actually, as we're talking, you're probably on the train heading off to old actually by that time you'll no be in new york thursday i'll be in new york i'll have already have seen funny mean? girl and potus i've also ha- i will have seen olivia rodrigo in concert because that's tuesday night so, okay. yes that's right we, we're about to go into our musical uh, part of the show and we're going to talk about olivia rodriguez which if you remember back to rodrigo rodriguez rodrigo, rodrigo. 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 <laughs> Uh, if you remember back to, I think it was November or October of last year, uh, she had released her first album after breaking up with a gay guy from the high school musical to musical. And Michael got me to listen to it, which I then had to then talk about on the following podcast. Obsessed. He is going to see that in New York. Uh, God bless your husband. <laughs> no, he's I'm excited. Saying. He's even like, she's very good. She's very good. I, like, oh yeah, listen. yeah. Oh, I can't can't agree with you anymore. Oh yeah. Goop gag and got. Uh, she is super good. I'm excited to see if she's actually going to be good live, or if we're going to get uh, Taylor Swift. Yeah, Taylor Swift writes gorgeous songs, and she has a lot of auto tune that makes her sound good. Or Beyonce. Um, her live. At, well, no, I've seen Beyonce live. Beyonce can do it live. Taylor Swift can't. She can. I'm telling you, Beyonce can do it live. Say what you want about her, if you like her music or not. She can at least sing live. No, she can. Like, I, 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 I promise you she's singing live. Okay. Well, as you can imagine, uh, with Michael heading down to Broadway to help do some of these shows, he will be back. Of course, he will be back because it's part of his show now. He will be back in be back, be back, be back, be back in May, and we will be sort of giving our reviews. Well, not me, but he will. He will tell us all about his experiences down in the great Broadway NYC and talk about Olivia Rodrigo. Yes, but- Rodrigo, like her car goes because she now has her driver's license. How long have you been sitting on that? Floor? Like 10 minutes. <laughs> God. I think we need to have another bet to kick you off the show as associate producer. Hey, That's real. <laughs> our, our listeners have come to agree that I am the mean one in the group. You're just here for the levity. <laughs> I'm just here for the vibes. The vibes, the this, that, and the other. Um, talking about music well i would love to continue talking about olivia rodrigo um the other big story that happened over the last 30 days is coachella uh where 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 the rich of the rich get together and have their own private concert in the middle of a desert where they can sit and veg out and do as much drugs as possible before having to go back to the reality of their everyday life um so coachella happened it was a thing it was a music festival. I know one person who actually went. Really? Yeah. Um, what, we, what What's your takeaway? It seems like Canadians were sort of the big thing this year. Shania Twain, Justin Bieber, uh, The Weeknd were there. Harry Styles was there. What, any big anything you want to talk about Coachella for a few minutes about? Because that's about as much as I know. I was just going to say, I was just about to ask, how much? <laughs> Much more of Coachella do you know you're doing really well that's it okay <laughs> that, um, is, that is my two minutes of semi-research of hearing someone else talk about it for five minutes 
Coachella is, how do I say this <laughs> nicely? Um, not fun. Nobody that goes to Coachella, unless you are having VIP, um, is having fun. They're there for Instagram. They are there for social media. Um, I don't know anyone that's ever gone to Coachella that's been like, that was a really enjoyable experience. It's always been, that was miserable. Oh, but your Instagram pictures look like you're having fun. Yeah, that's Instagram. Um, Coachella also is run by a gentleman who frequently and consistently is donating money to Donald Trump, to the Republican Party, to gay conversion. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's not a good person. And he gets all these liberal folks from Southern California to flock to his festival and bring him money. And it's all for Instagram. The only reason people go to Coachella is to say they're at Coachella. Okay. And with that knowledge now in my head, that will be the first and only time this show ever talks about that festival that shall never be named on this show ever again. Listen, we can talk about it. It's just, I'm never going to go. <laughs> yeah. I don't. This, this culture that we are in of everything has to be put on social media is getting really, 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 really boring. Yeah. Life is not social media. Yeah. You can experience things that don't actually need to happen on social media. Sure. That's why the theater is so great because you cannot film copyrighted material you can't wink wink i, I will not be filming for this show thank you <laughs> come on as the associate producer you have to get us Absolutely the inside scoop Absolutely not associate producer michael nichols paid already falling down on this job not even day one you're welcome <laughs> May 1st, we're, our first board meeting is going to be quite interesting, okay? We're having board meetings? You're part of the team. You're part of the editorial team now, yeah. Love it. <laughs> Let's do it. Ready to go. So if this, if this show becomes more gay, everyone, I do apologize. No, no. I don't. I say you're all welcome. Oh, quick sidebar, because we can do that because it's our show. Um, I got my first and only note of the entire run. I was told that the cat in the hat was, quote, a bit too fierce. Because that's my role. And I'm like, I literally was like. Oh, okay, so for like, the Susical. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, so what I'm the hearing. The show. I, I, yeah, not yet. Um, I Halloween edition. fully was like, I raised my hand. And I go to the director. I'm like, so you're asking me to not be as gay in this part of the show. And he's like. I mean, when you put it like that, and I'm like, nope, nope, I got it. I got Will it. Will do. <laughs> I understand the words that are coming out of your mouth. I will heterosexual it up for you. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just going to make it a little less gay. I have, I have a fan, like one of those clack clack fans, um, and I'm using it in that moment. He's like, it's a little You know much. what? That, that, that is our cover for this episode. <laughs> what? I'm taking that photo from the theater company and I'm using that as the actual cover of the show. So your face. Good luck getting it. Challenge accepted. Already saved it on the computer. What? The photo. Oh, me with the fur? Yeah. <laughs> it's fake fur. For everyone listening, it is a fake fur. I can guarantee you that. We do not condone wearing real fur. So that is going to be our show. Listen, I look, I'll send you the one without my name and the cat logo on it. I think that photo is fabulous. Done. My that publicity is, photo. So for those who are wondering what the episode show is, that's what it is. Is there a song that comes off of that? Do you sing in that show? Yeah, you sing. I sing many times. I sing the most in that show, actually. What's the song? What's the favorite song of yours? Um, the favorite song? Yeah. Um, What's the one that you're proud of? I really like how lucky you are. How lucky you are. Well, if you're wondering I where the actual, on this show. <laughs> if you were wondering where the show title came from and the photo, it's 
brought to you by Michael Nichols Pate, the new associate producer of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Hi, Robin. You're upset, aren't you? Of course. So with that, uh, what else did we want to talk about? Actually, we're going to take another quick break. And then the next segment is going to be the long segment. Because we have some discussions about Johnny Depp, about Jim Carrey, about Sylvester Stallone, about what's going on in Florida, because every entertainment show needs to talk about Florida at least once. And then, of course, our ongoing segment, where in the world is Jason Derulo? I gotta go, Jason. So with that, we'll be right back after this brief commercial break. June 2nd is election day in Ontario. Ontarians from Windsor to Ottawa, Toronto to Thunder Bay will be heading to the ballot box and electing their next provincial government. During the month of May though, the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown will be in Ontario covering the election for our show with interviews with undecided voters, candidates for office, and political pundits across the spectrum. We have you covered for this biggest election of 2022. Now you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your favorite shows. Or if you're like me, watch the show online via YouTube. Welcome back. Uh, as the show, as the commercial just said, I will be heading back to Ontario every weekend during the month of May to talk about the Ontario election. So tune in to our social media feed. It's going to be fun. And then, so this is going to be breaking news. We will be coming down to New York to actually chat with Michael live in person for an upcoming episode on Euphoria. Live from New York. It's Saturday night. (laughs) No. Uh, NBC, please don't sue me or us for that. Yeah, that's what you say. Um, so let's talk about celebrity news that's happened over the last uh, 30 days. I think the big one that we have to start off with is the court case that seems to never end. First starting in Brit- uh, Britain, then heading to Australia. Now making its waves all the way in uh, California. That is Johnny Depp suing his ex-wife, Amber Heard, for defamation of his character. Uh, I have not been watching this as closely as some. My father, my father of all people, texts me and says, have you watched this Johnny Depp stuff? It's kind of interesting, isn't it? I'm like, no, I've got other things I got to do. Michael, um briefly if you can because i could probably do it but i don't know all the interworkings briefly describe to our listeners who like me have so tuned out the johnny depp and amber heard or whatever you want to pronounce your last name ordeal in two minutes two to three minutes like i did with will smith and chris rock sure i'm not gonna go as fast as you just because um that's too much um <laughs> but I mean, at this point, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, it's, I mean, we're all, I mean, unless you haven't been following or even are unaware of who these folks even are, uh, Amber Heard accused Johnny Depp of domestic abuse. Johnny Depp lost a bunch of work. And then Johnny Depp accused Amber Heard of domestic abuse and Amber Heard didn't lose work. So then there was a big, big push of social media and the internet to essentially get her canceled, which then led to Johnny Depp now suing her for defamation and lost work and all this other stuff. And it's, I mean, we're, I'm barely watching it. It's just all over the TikTok. And I'm like, I'm trying to watch funny dog videos. Like I don't, and it's like every single person's talking about this and everyone is picking sides. And I'm going to be honest, I don't think either of them are great people. I mean, Johnny Depp has, a track record of being abusive on set to other folks working with him. I mean, they're both not great people. I, I, and I'm not justifying anyone's abuse of anything. Amber Heard also is being shown as being very manipulative and all the videos coming out and she's being, um, now there's also this whole thing of how she's copying his outfits that he wears the next day. Um, and like, it's, it's just so much. And the internet is like feeding frenzy it right now. They're eating it up, it seems like. Yeah. Because, uh, as I said, 
I have not been paying attention to this. For those who don't know, and I'll give a little bit of a backstory here. Johnny Depp, Pirates of the Caribbean. Johnny Depp, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Frank and, Frankie and Beanie, if I'm not mistaken, that's the name of the Frankie and something. Uh, he's been around. He's been around since the 90s. Yeah. And uh, Amber Heard, relatively new to the entertainment business. If I'm not mistaken, they met on the uh, movie Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, where they got together and now they, they got married after that. She is popular for those who are the comic book nerds in the group who are listening to this right now. She was in Aquaman uh, as Mara, and she is mm-hmm. going to be in Aquaman too. but it seems that movie seems to be delayed and delayed, and I wonder why. Yeah. So she is more famous for that role. I think that's her only big that's about claim. it. And that's her big claim to fame. Uh, in reality, she's uh, blonde, but in the movie, she's red, so it kind of looks different, but you would know where to see her. Um, the only thing that I haven't seen from this shit show, and I can tell you, I can say that because I'm going to set this up, is, correct me if I'm wrong, did someone poo in a bed? I don't know if there's video of it or photos of it. It was a I photo. I think it's a tweet. It was, okay. Oh, or not a tweet, a text. But okay. there may be a photo and I just haven't seen it. I was watching because I, it was the one time it came across my Twitter feed and I was like, okay, I'll click on and see what the fuck it's all about. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? Well, also there was a video that came out that Amber Heard posted of Johnny Depp like slamming doors in the house and throwing around coffee mugs and glasses and drinking in the morning or something. And it's like, it's just all this freaking like, non-stop media that both of them are presenting like more texts against the other and more videos against the other and photos and it's just like why and like the media is eating it up is and like, this the new oj i think so is this the new because i do not remember this much attention when it was in australia because the court case in australia and britain they were weird but they were there but i do not remember this much news now that it's here in LA, it's like fucking the paparazzi have just yeah. swarmed LA in that courthouse to try and get their yeah. big claim to fame. And it's being live streamed. And I mean, you can go on TikTok, scroll through TikTok for 30 minutes, not even 30, scroll through TikTok for five minutes and you'll find someone live streaming it on TikTok. People, I'm going to say this as the host of the Cross Border and the executive producer of the show, get a life. Put down your phone, go get a life. Actually, so listen to the end of this episode. Then come back. Tomorrow. Then put down your phone. <laughs> then put down your phone. <laughs> then come back tomorrow at eight o'clock. And pick it up again. Listen to this. And then go back. <laughs> exactly. Um, moving on to the next one because again, sure. I don't want to spend much time on Johnny Depp because again, he probably does not need any more time than he does. Uh, Sylvester Stallone came out during the last thirty days and said in an interview that. He does not believe movies like Rocky would be uh, created in 2022 with the rise of CGI, with the rise of Marvel movies. Do you agree with that? No. Really? Why not? I mean, we just saw it at the Oscar movies, tons of fabulous, fantastic movies with little to no CGI involved. Like Coda was a brilliant film and it was just a film with no gimmicks. (laughs) <laughs> I think I think it's just an excuse for. Oh my god! Continue, what? continue. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. There's a new segment I'm gonna bring in, and I want to talk about it here for a few minutes. I just, I think it's. I don't know. I just think it's. I don't even want to say excuse. I don't know why he made the statements he made. Maybe they wouldn't be as successful. But I don't even think. So. I think if a movie is good, it's gonna do well. And I think that's the big thing. Like, yeah, it might not be like Marvel big or Jurassic Park big or whatnot, but like word of mouth is how Coda got around and it ended up being one of the best movies of the year that everyone who's seen it is raving about. Yeah, it might not be blown up as much as like Godfather was or uh, Rocky was, but I don't know. I still think that they would have done just as well. I think it's just meh. 
Well, and I think it comes from the era too, because he self-produced that movie too, right? Mm -hmm. He put his money on the line. You don't see that too often. No. Coda, you had Amazon or Apple put their yep. money behind that. So I, I can see where he's coming from in that scenario. You don't see too many independently produced no. films do big. Does that mean that they're all going to be like that? No, some do sneak by, make a good movie, and it does happen. But you sure. have to remember, back in the 70s when Rocky did come out, there was like three studios. Making now, like two movies a year. Exactly. Now you have a studio on everyone's phone, and they can release it via YouTube, and you would still win an Oscar if you release a video a year from now. You'll win an Oscar two years from now because that's how the Oscars work with short film documentaries or short film live. <laughs> that's a subtle hint. Live action, life. short live action. That's the one I want to talk about. Um, I Maybe it's just me thinking way too much into it, but Sylvester, just do better make better shit and people might actually care about you again well is he like making movies like i'm confused why he like took this as a moment to like say like is he currently making movies that nobody's seeing like that's where i'm confused probably i guess i mean i don't know speaking about movies that no one has seen but we need to talk about the actor in them bruno no i'll put close um over the last 30 days, it came out after um, the Oscars that Bruce Willis uh, oh. was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is, this, is the, this is the sad part of the show, everyone, so I do apologize for bringing this down a little bit, but it was announced that uh, Bruce Willis, after many years in the movie industry and television industry, would be retiring from the entertainment industry due to a uh, neurological aphasia. aphasia which is causing him to uh, have trouble remembering lines, saying things. This comes literally, this came like literally a week after the Razzies had given him an award, which they then later rescinded uh, because of everything that he's going through. Um, Bruce Willis, everyone knows him from Armageddon, things like that. Um, I remember from Moonlighting, it's a big loss when someone like him comes out with a, a disease like this. And it wasn't him. It was Rumor Willis's daughter. Uh, I wish him all the best. I don't know him. I would, I never met the man, but I, I, I know people are struggling. This is, this is going to, this is, this, this is going to sound like a bad part of the show. And I apologize for anyone who's about to get offended by this, but there are people out there who are struggling with this that are not celebrities who do not get the attentions that Bruce Willis does. So I will say uh, I feel bad for anyone who's going through this right now. I, I, I do not know any of anyone who has this. So please do not think that I'm being uh, glib by saying this, but I, I hope for the best. But I've read into it and it does not look like it's a good prognosis. So... I will remember him for what he's given to the entertainment industry. I, I do wish him and his family the time that they have together the best. So, Michael, any yeah. words on Bruce Willis? No, I think, I mean, you said everything that can really be said on this. Um, yeah. I've not done as much research into aphasia. Um, I just know very surface level with regards to it. But, I mean, he's, I think retiring is the best next step for him. And, I mean, the man was making, like, 20 movies a year I, I think we can let we can let him retire it's time to just allow him to take a break and really focus on his family and the time he has right now with them yeah um speaking about another actor who is retiring from uh, movies now we're, we'll get into a little bit of a back and forth here one of the one of the first reasons why I got hate mail from Michael, and probably to this day, the only reason I got hate mail from Michael, for Michael on the show, um, Jim Carrey on his press tour of Sonic the Hedgehog two, uh, Knuckles or something, whatever the Sonic the Hedgehog two, I'll just say that, uh, announced that he was stepping back from acting. He was going into a sort of keep my god 
dang Canadian actor's name out of your godforsaken mouth. I've said not a nary a moment. Continue. Um, announced that he was going to be stepping back from acting and just relaxing. Uh, this He did uh, allude to the fact that he may come back, though, depending on the script. So I'm about to mute myself because I'm not going to let Michael talk. But Michael, because I, if I don't mute myself, then you'll hear me interrupt him every five seconds. I'm a big, massive Jim Carrey fan. Michael is not. If you've listened to the show beforehand, you know what he's probably going to say. But Michael, what are your thoughts on Jim Carrey retiring from the movies? To sum up a very great philosopher named Elmo. Too bad, so sad. Bye, Rocco. I hate you. (laughs) Listen, I am not a fan, and I don't mean to sit here and bash Jim Carrey for 800 years. I I don't like the way, I don't like, I, I will say this, I love him in Truman Show. It's probably the only work of his that I absolutely love. I am all right with him and I love you, Philip Morris. That's kind of where it stops for me with Jim Carrey. I'm not a fan and that's okay. I don't have to be a fan of everything. And I do not have to be a fan of everything, Chris. Yes, you do. I, listen, e- and that's- everything Canadian on the critically acclaimed Canadian podcast. Yes, you do. Um, there's been plenty of Canadian things that I've mentioned that you do not like. Like what? Justin Bieber. I like his one song. He has more than one song. No, he doesn't. I rest my case. <laughs> um, and listen, if, if you are a fan of Jim Carrey, this baby, is probably devastating baby, news. Baby. Ah, yeah, but baby. if you are not a fan of him and find that he overacts like I do, which that's what's being asked of him. He's following what the director is telling him to do because he can pull back. We saw it in Truman Show. I thought the Truman Show is one of the best things he's ever done. Just number like 23? Than... Number what? Number 23? Haven't seen it. Lemony Snickets? Series of Unfortunate? Not a fan. Better than the Neil Patrick Harris one, though. Oh, 100%. I mean... Okay, thank God. <laughs> I just, I, 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 the Lemony Snicket books, I couldn't even get into. So, I mean, that also is just a twofold of not liking the book series. I think I was, when they came out, I was a little too old for them to really properly enjoy them. Now, to quote one of my uh, shows that I listen to on a, on, a, on a weekly basis, to quote a show that I, 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 I tune in so quickly every Saturday morning. What's the beef? Why is he retiring? I don't know. Do you know? No, I don't. I was just trying to figure that out. Is it he's not getting jobs anymore? Like, is He's he... probably not. He also is not... He's got some kind of questionable beliefs. Like, he's very anti-vax. Is he? Yeah. Like in like he and Jenny McCarthy are like two of the most they, commonly known about anti vaxxers No, maybe I don't I don't know maybe. It seems like they would have dated, but he's very anti-vax and like so he's not got a great reputation because of that. And also, I'm sure that the roles aren't coming in. I mean, he really hasn't had too much work. And then Sonic, I think, is the most recent things that he's done, and those are. He might not have gotten a lot of work, but he's bankable. Is he? Sonic's not doing great, is it? The first one did. Is the second one? I I don't think it's come out yet. I think it comes out in May. I thought it was out already. I thought I saw TikToks about it. It is totally Yeah, out. it is out. Okay, I apologize. For those who want to go see Sonic the Hedgehog 2 April in Calgary. 8th. Calgary this weekend, um, give me a shout. I'll come out and not go to the movie theaters and I'll just go get popcorn and a drink and come home and 
wait till it comes out streaming. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yes, he the movies are bankable, but is that because it's him or is it because it's Sonic the Hedgehog? True that. True that. I I will give you that, my fine associate producer friend, you. Okay. So we have talked about the three big uh, celebrity news stories. Let's talk about the the biggest, one of the biggest stories that's happened over the last 30 days in the entertainment world. And that is the fight. And this is kind of crossing borders <laughs> on the cross-border interviews. How long have you been sitting on that one? <laughs> Every day I do this show. <laughs> I can't with you. Um, this is going to cross the world of politics and entertainment. Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, has come out and personally taken a bullseye to Disney World and said that Disney World is no longer going to get the tax credits and the ability to do what they want on their grounds without the proper processing that has been a long-standing tradition for Disney World since the 1970s when it first opened. Um, Michael, this is after Disney decided that the Don't Say Gay Bill was a affront to the uh, engineers and the cartoonists and the colorists and the X, Y, and Z working at Disney because they were going to boycott. Um, what was your thoughts as the American in the room? As the American in the room, America, oh America. What did you think about Ron DeSantis and Mr. Disney World himself? Don't know the new CEO's name, Bob Chapek. Pu yeah, public feud, Bob Chapek. Um, Bob Iger, let's come back, like. Disney decided all of a sudden that the bill that they funded was not great because the internet was like fully canceling Disney and pretty much was succeeding. And then Disney decided, oh no. And then Ron DeSantis taking going to war with Disney. Great, good luck. You just saddled three counties with 146 billion, no, million, million. 146 million extra tax dollars that now need to come from citizens that Disney doesn't have to pay because Disney was paying that 146 million every year. Now, where's that money coming from? Everyday citizens. This is not going to last. They're going to give it back to Disney because Disney, Disney might be inconvenienced for a little bit of time. Well, ultimately, I found, I found when that the voting one. rolls around. I found that quite interesting because I read the bill because I'm one of those weird people that actually read fucking bills. What do you do when you sit in a chair and you get radiation and chemo pumped into you? I read legislative bills from America uh, and Florida. That's what I do on my spare time. Um, this doesn't take effect till May of next year. Yeah. Like, not like May this year, May 2023. So yeah. we have a Florida governor election. Mm -hmm. we have a midterm you don't think this is going to be changed within 10 minutes of that midterm going well we saw the errors of our way <laughs> not even that he's going to use it to get elected by the with the conservatives going yeah you said fuck you to disney and then he's going to reverse it the minute he's reelected. and then he's going to run for president yeah good luck not if donnie wants to they're all going to step down if donnie wants to Anyway, that's a political show where the entertainment. Yep. Nope. Show. Nope. Nope. We're not doing politics. She can't. No. 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 Um, but I'm, I'm surprised that Disney's gotten a backbone in this. I'm not. Really? No. What this is doing now that Disney's decided to get political is it's forcing them to pick a side. The fact that people are now more cognizant of, hey, where are your money? Oh, you're spending money for this and this. People are then choosing to not go. So people are looking, the conservatives are looking and saying, oh, Disney's becoming very liberal. We're not going to go. Disney's supporting liberals. The liberals are saying, oh, look, Disney's supporting conservative politicians because Disney's giving money to everybody. They're just giving money to people to try and get as many people in their back pocket that they can. That's why they're funding all these politicians. But people are now seeing it 
and people are not impressed with Disney. And there's a lot, there's a big push for people to be like, well, Disney's being kind of fucking awful. So goodbye. Um, Does this change the name of the game when it comes to com- uh, entertainment companies like Disney, like MGM, stepping back and getting out of the political realm and just saying, you know what, we're not donating to anyone. We're just going to be an entertainment business from now on. And I know yet again, we're crossing a little border here. I do apologize on the cross border interviews, but this is kind of a big entertainment story yeah. because di- this is the first time that Disney, like Michael said, has gotten this close to kind of being blown up into a point where, a lot of things are going to happen because if Disney moves out of Florida, that takes one of the biggest private entertainment companies in Florida. Disney's never moving out of Florida. You don't think so? No, they have too much infrastructure there. They have too much of a theme park. They would have to like to move all that theme park too. We wouldn't see Disney probably open back up for another five or six years if they shuttered. And that's pretty much their sole income right now is these is Disney world. So I I think what they're going to do is they're going to let the taxpayers have to pay maybe a year of this, and then they're going to be crawling back. I don't think that, and I'm going to be honest, I don't think that Disney is going to stay out of politics. They want as many politicians in their pocket so they can keep doing what they want to do without much question. What I think this is doing is it's now forcing Disney to pick a side because Disney's been playing neutral and a lot of companies that are playing neutral better hope that they don't get a reckoning like this. Because it's it's forcing some Disney to now go, okay, who are we going to support, the conservatives or the liberals? Because yeah. no one's coming now. And people who book tickets in advance that are regretting it, like they have to now pick who do we support. And they're starting to back their money on liberals because that's who's going to come back versus the conservatives who probably won't. Because if you lose out on the liberal base, which is the largest growing demographic, or even the Gen Z base, which is very socially conscious. So where do the where do the conservatives go? Dollywood. They are going back to Dollywood, despite Dolly Parton being like donating tons of money to queer youth and queer youth and, and vaccine. <laughs> yeah, they're literally like giving their money to Dollywood, which great. I'm here for it. <laughs> which then Dolly is giving it to vaccine production company. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. I, I thank you for taking a little tangent with about politics and entertainment, but I wanted to talk about it. Um, before we go into the movie section, we're going to take another quick break, and this one's just a quick little three-second introduction, uh, and then we'll be back with our final wrap down of movies and television uh, that's happened in the last three days, and a little bit of a preview, and then we'll uh, bid you adieu. So with that, here we'll be right back after a 30-second commercial break. Talk to you soon. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15-second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to Patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Welcome back. That was a great commercial break. We are here. We have a few last minute conversations that we want to talk about. That is what's coming up, what's been on. And let's start with uh, TV shows. Um, we can't get away from the entertainment rundown without mentioning uh, the woman of the hour, the man of the hour, the drag queen of the hour, Miss RuPaul. Ruppel. 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 Rupple Drag Queen Show. Rupple Drag Queen Show has crowned its 14th season winner, Mrs. Willow, Willow Pill. Pill. Willow, Willow Pill. 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 Willow Pill. Um, which to my husband and my dismay said that was the longest, most redundant season we have ever seen because at the end of the day, nothing happened. Literally nothing happened. And I saw the social media people go to town and say, every single one of these queens need to be invited back on to an all-star season because they're all all-stars. Do they? Do they? Do they? (laughs) 
So with that, Michael, did you, were you impressed? Were you shocked? Were you gooped? Were you gagged? Were you gawked about the winner of RuPaul's season 14? I'm not mad at it. I really like Willow Pill. I think my biggest issue is how much of a stretch it was when you had two queens with three wins apiece and better stories from editing. But I don't think they initially thought Willow was going to be as beloved as the other as as the other queens or, or but Bosco Willow, and Lady Camden, uh, shall we say yeah. those names? Yep. I, I think I think it was being set up for Bosco and Lady Camden to be the final two with Bosco taking the crown. Um, I think whenever because RuPaul loved Willow Pill and she's gone on record saying Willow Pill is one of her favorite queens. I think when everyone watched it just fell in love with Willow Pill and everyone was rooting for Willow. I I think that's when it changed. I also think the only reason Diabetti was there was because Cornbread broke her ankle. Yeah, well, that's didn't Willow Pill say that? Thank well, you. Willow Pill <laughs> joke said that in her acceptance, but which I is mean, true though. Think, Let's be honest. I well, think Willow Cornbread... would have been there. I think it would have been Daya, and I think Daya only was there because Cornbread wasn't. Okay, true, true that. So that's the obligatory five minutes that we're going to do on RuPaul. Um, what are you watching? What are you paying attention to this month in uh, uh, the old TV shows? The flight attendant just came back. The Kaylee Cuoco um, HBO drama. It's very good. I know y'all don't get HBO in Canada. I'm very sorry. I th- wait, when is that changing? We get HBO. Oh, you... We, we get it. Oh, you don't get Paramount Plus. Sorry. I was going to say we um, don't get CNN Plus either, but no one does. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. I didn't think Kelly Cuoco could act. I mean, I've seen Big Bang Theory. I stood firm in that. And then I watched the first season of The Flight Attendant and was shook at how good she is. Um, I really liked it. And I'm excited for season two. I think it's going to be fantastic. It's going great so far. I love a twisty, turny kind of show. Um, what else? I also... As Singer, did you watch the Rudy, Rudy Giuliani reveal? I've not. I've been so uninvested in it because of the Rudy Giuliani moment. And I, I tried watching. I watched the first three episodes like in a row. They're in my DVR. If I get to it, I get to it. If not, I mean, I'm just not... I don't know. I think the mass singers run its course. And if I'm not doing, and if I'm not watching it with other people, it's just not worth watching. It's just Jonathan and I, and we're guessing to each other. Whereas when I'm like playing around, like with friends, like we're guessing together and so many people are just not watching because of Rudy. So it's like, well, who am I guessing for myself? I saw it on uh, the, the Twitter. I saw uh, Ken John leave and I was like, oh, he did the right thing. I'm like, whatever. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> First world problems, people. Yeah. First world problems. And then the CBS version of Ghosts just ended. The new American version. I love it. I really love it. And you like I, it too? I'm so, I'm, I'm so I'm flabbergasted that we have not talked about this show. <laughs> I, sh- not- I didn't think you were watching it. I was, I was totally watching it because I loved the original BBC one. And I was like, okay, they're going to fuck this up royally because they usually always do. As, well, uh, just looking at the uh, BBC office and then BBC or then NBC's office, I was like, this is either going to be really bad or this is really going to be really good. And the other thing is literally they are doing ghosts in BBC as they are like doing ghosts on CBS. So it's like verbatim I think there are two or three seasons ahead of uh, the really like it. CBS, but I, I, I was actually enthralled, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is hilarious!" I, they, they've made some lib- like some changes to make sure it's more uh, American, American. But I am. <laughs> I just love the, the zombies downstairs and how they unionized. <laughs> the cholera patients, bless them. <laughs> What's her name? Nancy? Love her. She's my favorite. This, if you have not seen it, I would highly recommend you go and um, 
when we had Paramount Plus for seven days, because we randomly just keep on changing our email address together for seven days, please don't cancel us, CBS, uh, Paramount Plus. Um, we we watch it, and it's actually one of the ones right. that we're actually excited about because it it's enjoyable. Um, also, watching Abbott Elementary. I've heard weird things about that. It's so funny. As someone who has a degree, I have a degree in teaching. Like I was teaching in schools, and like it's so fucking accurate and it's so funny and it's so well written i cannot stop raving about it enough it's so good it's so i will i i've not seen it um we, as we as i said at the at the second commercial break um we are going to be doing a, a full length episode on euphoria because i did watch all of it Michael challenged me back in January. This is our first show back since January because we had our entertainment rundown Oscar predictions in February, uh, in March, February, March. March. So this is our first episode back since February. So two months uh, since we've uh, last talked about it, but we will be doing a full length review on Euphoria. I have some notes because that's what I've watched in the last 60 days. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, TV hasn't really been holding my attention lately. No, I've been so focused on watching all the Oscar movies that, like, I've just not had time to watch anything else. I will say I've watched two movies: um, Death on the Nile, The Batman. They which, just if you want, if you want to, which they're on Crave TV for those listening in Canada, um, I would highly recommend to tuning into Saturday's uh, movie reviews because yes, they're on Saturdays now because just this Surprise. week. <laughs> Surprise! Yay! Um, be sure to tune in this Saturday. We have three new movies that will be coming out. With one of them is yes, yes, the Batman, and we have some strong opinions on it. Mm, we should, uh... <laughs> um, so with that. Uh, I guess the only thing that we need to talk about is no, you don't want to. You don't want to say his name. No, <laughs> no, you don't want to say his name. Mm-mm. Okay, the uh, ladies go home. <laughs> uh, so with that, uh, Michael, you know what we did? We got out it. in an hour and a half. Oh my God! Someone needs to give us an Oscar. <laughs> Thank you. Like, for serious, just because we have two hours does not mean that we need to take two hours. Um, so, thank you for tuning in. Michael, do you have anything last minute to just say? Um, uh, no. <laughs> so with that, uh, I am Chris Brown, the host and executive producer of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. He is Michael Nichols-Pate, the entertainment correspondent and associate producer of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Uh, we will be back for another great edition of the Cross Border Interviews Entertainment Rundown at the end of this month, end of next month, sorry, end of May. Uh, if you have any suggestions on what we should talk about, highly recommend it. If you haven't already, head over to our YouTube channel, check out our Night of the Movies movie reviews, where we have reviewed up to, including 29, 29, that's right, you heard it here, right here first, it's actually 27, I can't do math here properly, 27, 27 movies, uh, we would highly recommend that if you have some movies you want us to review, submit them, go to our website, crossboardinterviews.ca, submit some of your favorite movies that you would love us to actually review. Now, there is a sort of uh, brief uh, note here. Make them movies that people would know. <laughs> Not random B or C or D movies. We have been getting a few in, and there are some that we go, what is this movie? Then we look at it. There's one that's coming up. I would highly recommend. That is my dog. I do apologize. Highly recommend you tune in this Saturday for some great movies, and then next Saturday or the week after for some others. Michael, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Love it. Love it. Anyway, have yourself an excellent gut day. And remember, guys. Get out from behind social media now that Elon Musk owns it and put down your phone and actually go and talk to somebody. Have a conversation and stop tweeting. (laughs) (laughs) What?
Elon Musk owns it. I'm dead. No, he knows. Not yet. As of today, he does. <gasps> he owns Twitter. He owns Twitter as of today. $44 billion. Enough to solve world hunger, but we thought we would save free speech first. So with right. that, have yourself well, an excellent right. rest of your day. Talk to you later. And remember, guys, just keep talking. Bye. Bye.